morning and welcome to today's edition of Coffee and the Word. You know, I realized I never tell you who I am, but I've put it at the bottom of the screen. My name is Dale House. I'm the pastor of the Los Fresnos Church of Christ. And uh, I do these every day really as a labor of love. And, and I pray that in doing these, I'm somehow giving you some hope. And I've, I got some really awesome comments the other day that just warmed my heart. And so thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. But more than that, I hope that you're applying the things that I'm uh, laying out for you. Um, I, I really believe that the key to finding the life that God intended you to live is living the life God <laughs> intended you to live. And so uh, today we're going to talk about something that I think is at least transformative in my mind. Uh, and I hope I'm able to to take it from, from here and deliver it to there um, in some way. But I, I'm going to launch. We've been talking a lot about how then should I live. Like, okay, so because of everything God has done for me, how should I live? It, it's no longer a so that. I'm not doing it so God will accept me and love me and so that God will forgive my sins. God's already, God's already laid that out. How do I respond to all of that? And, and we, we looked at uh, uh, 2 Peter 1, which he said, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge, knowledge self-control. And, and, and he went on through all that. He says he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Your inability to live out your faith is not a result of your lack of ability. Your inability is a lack of desire oftentimes, or at least a lack of drive. And so then we went over to Philippians, and we looked at Philippians chapter 2, 3, and 4, and we could have started in 1. Because Paul says, in one is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In other words, we're going to talk a lot about that because I think that's a key to it. And I should have started there, but that's okay because you can watch these in reverse if you want. <laughs> but he says, how then, or we're talking about how then should we live. And I think it has to start with you have to know who you are. Your identity is paramount to your success. You have to know who you are. If you live your life believing that you are a broken, worthless, sinful, hideous person, that's probably what you're going to live up to. And so I love what Peter writes in, in 1 Peter chapter 2. He says, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. And then skip down to verse 9. He says, but you... Remember I told you the other day that I'm talking to you or I'm talking to me. This is for me, which is you, you are me, me are you. You know, remember that really confusing thing that I said? <laughs> The you here is you. The you here is me. He says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, now you have received mercy. And so I, I want to start with an analogy. And, and I used this analogy with a friend of mine and uh, shout out to her. Uh, but this is the analogy that I used. I want you to imagine walking into a room and just happen to notice that the president of the United States is in that room. And the president of the United States is standing off in the corner by himself. No one is around him and he's picking his nose. What would you think? You think, what a terrible person. No, you've probably seen other people do that. What you would really think is, a president shouldn't do that. That's not what a president should do. Does he not know his station in life? Does he not know that he can't do those things? Like we would look at him and we would be like, that's not, that's not, that's not what presidents do. Well, that's not what royal priesthoods do either. You are nobility. You have been called out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You have been brought into the fold of the most high God. 
You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, so that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. You are special. And sometimes we live as though that's not true. And so I want to encourage you, as you think about these things, I want you to encourage you to realize that God has not called you to futility, but to nobility. He, it's what, what Paul says, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. You see the reflection that I now present, I represent because I have been rescued. I have been redeemed. I have been cleansed. I have been purified. I, I once was a pauper. Now I am noble. And I want you to understand that every decision you should ma you make, every action that you take, you should consider your station in the kingdom of God before you do it. Some of us have been picking our noses, which is not fitting to our station. I'm not going to make this a long video. It's Friday and I want you to go into the weekend and I have a whole lot more to say about this uh, next week because I really think that if you can wrap your mind around how God sees you and the station that he has determined you to be in, it, it could change your life. If you wake up every day recognizing who you are, knowing your identity in Christ Jesus, then you can live that out with the nobility that you were intended to have. So for today, God bless you. You who are noble, have a wonderful weekend. This has been another edition of Coffee and the Word.